how are you? My name is Elizabeth Dale and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Cornish writer and blogger who just can't help trying to tell Cornwall's hidden stories and discover some of its untold history. So for those of you that have been listening to my podcast before, thank you so much for coming back and joining me again. I really hope you've enjoyed them. And for those of you that have left me feedback and comments and likes, I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me to hear what you think of what I'm doing. This is a a new adventure for me. So we're all finding our way together. So what are we going to be talking about today. Well, for those of you that know Cornwall quite well, you know that down here a rock is never just a rock. And so today I'm going to be talking about Logan Rocks. And what is a Logan Rock? Well, a Logan Rock is any rock or boulder really that is balanced on top of another and wobbles. Now this phenomenon is caused by natural processes of just uh, erosion and weathering but it undermines the rocks uh, in such a way that it creates a perfect pivot so that someone like me can walk up to a stone that weighs several tons and move it easily with my hand and this really is kind of magical. Now I'm sure that these stones uh, occur all across the country but for some reason in Cornwall we just love them, me included obviously, and we've given them this special name, the Logan Rock. Now really it should be pronounced Logan from the Cornish word log which I am assured means to rock like a drunk person. I'm not entirely sure that that's right. Anyway, my favourite Logan Rock is the magnificent one that you can find on Loudon Hill on Bodmin Moor. And this one just rocks beautifully. I did once try and work out how much it weighed, but yeah, I didn't get very far because, you know, maths is really not my strong point. But needless to say, he is pretty hefty, um, but I can rock him with very little effort at all. And the Logan Rock on Loudon Hill is just a small part of what is an incredible prehistoric landscape at that part of the moor. It's towered over by uh, Rao Tor, of course, but you can also find numerous hut circles and ancient field boundaries, as well as three stone circles in just a small area. There's Fernacre, Stannon and Loudon stone circle close by. And this, of course, makes me wonder if the Logan Rock had any significance for our ancient ancestors. And of course, the most famous uh, Logan Rock in Cornwall is the one near Treen down west. In fact, many people are under the impression that this is the only Logan Rock in Cornwall. But of course, there are actually loads of them of all different shapes and sizes. So the Logan Rock at Treen. Um, That one weighs in at about 60 tonnes, but it's said that it was on such a perfect pivot that it could easily be rocked by a small child. Now this Logan Rock sits on one of the most beautiful stretches of our coastline, near to the Minac Theatre, and it balances high up on the cliff top, so it's a gorgeous place to go and visit. But unfortunately, you won't be able to rock it quite the same as you could do in the past, because sadly, in the 1820s, someone decided to spoil our fun. And that man was called Hugh Goldsmith, and he was a Navy lieutenant. Now, Mr Goldsmith and his men were apparently drinking in the local pub when they heard the story of the Logan Rock, which in those days was already a bit of a tourist attraction. Anyway, legend had it that no mortal man could ever dislodge the rock from its position. Well, after a few more beers, Goldsmith and his men decided that they'd better go and give it a go. And the way that they did it seems to me a little bit of a cheat because they didn't try and push it off with their own manly brute strength. No, they they got some iron bars and after several hours of heaving and tugging, they managed to shove the Logan Rock from its perch. 
understandably, the Cornish people, the local people in the area, were absolutely outraged at this vandalism. You see, we're, we're quite a feisty lot when we get narked. Anyway, Goldsmith was apparently terrified and he actually wrote a letter to his mother saying how frightened he was and that he was being treated like a murderer. And what he had done was reported to the Admiralty, who told him that he must replace the stone immediately. Now, it wasn't as simple as that, and it actually took several months to put it back into place. And they had to construct a, a special system of wooden frames and pulleys in order to hoist the stone back up the cliff. And although they got it back into position, it was never quite the same again. They couldn't get it back on that per perfect pivot point. So unfortunately the Logan Rock at Treen is not quite as wobbly as it once was. Which brings us to another Logan Rock which suffered a similar fate and that's the Menamba Rock which you can find on the back lanes near Helston. Now this is a huge granite inland rock formation that towers over the surrounding countryside but unfortunately the topmost stone which was once the Logan Rock has now sort of slid out of its position onto one side and doesn't move anymore. But there are all kinds of weird associations with this place place. Stories of pagan worship in ancient times and of a wandering tribe of Mediterranean descent that used to worship these stones. But perhaps the most well-known story is the one that took place during the Civil War. And there was a man called Scrubsall who was the governor of Pendennis Castle and he was one of Cromwell's men and had heard that there was a local saying about Menamba Rock. He had heard that Merlin had prophesied that Menamba Rock would stand as long as England had a king. So he decided it was better to be safe than sorry and marched his men all the way from Pendennis to push the rock off its pivot. Anyway, Menamba Rock, as I said, now sort of lies propped up at a funny angle. And it's leaning against another stone which has created a funny sort of window through which I am told it is possible to crawl, not that I have actually tried. Now a cousin of mine who lives in the area has told me that it was once thought that crawling through this rock window was a bit of a cure-all and for women who were looking to get pregnant uh, pretty much the same as men and toll, well this was something that you needed to go and do. So you have been warned for those of you that decide you need to go and climb through the hole. But in more recent times, in the 19th century, religious services would still be held at Menamba Rock um, on the 4th of August every uh, Sithney feast day. And I always find it interesting when you get those crossovers between paganism and ancient myths and legends and Christianity. I love that sort of continuity. So that's just a few of the stories of the Logan Rocks that you can find in uh, Cornwall. But as I said, there are lots more of them out there, not as famous as the ones that I have mentioned. They're just dotted around the countryside, especially up on Bodmin Moor, where the conditions are obviously perfect with so much granite and so much wild erosion going on. And if you fancied a little adventure to go and find some, I would suggest a visit to Fox Tour, where I found three Logan Rocks all closely grouped together. Now, none of them are as big and impressive as the one on Loudon Hill, but they are just as much fun. So thank you so much for listening today, for taking the time to join me. And if you would like to find out some more about the Logan Rocks that I've been talking about today, then you can pop over to my blog, The Cornish Bird, where you can see photographs of them all and find out lots more information. And if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please don't forget to like and share. I would really appreciate it if you have any comments for me. I want to see them. And if you have a place that you would like me to talk about, I'd love to hear about that too. So take care of yourselves until next time and I hope you have the opportunity to get out and explore wherever you are. 
So thank you so much for listening and bye-bye for now.